PD has a set of simple filtering objects that we can use to apply high pass filtering, low pass filtering, and band pass filtering. I've got some audio loaded into a table. It's a loop that we've been using a lot for these movies. And to the left is some patching so that we can take a look at the DB. It really isn't necessary, it's just there to sort of let us know what the level is. And I've got a looping function so that if I want to, I can loop the file, which I'm going to do. And I can control the volume with this H slider. So let's take a listen to the file unfiltered. First thing I'll do is a, apply a high pass filter. So this will allow the high frequencies to pass through and the low frequencies to be shelved. To do this, I'll apply it after the final gain stage. You could apply it before, you could stack filters, cascade them. Um, working with filters is a really wonderful way to get expressive sounds. We're not gonna go into the details of how you could stack them or get different sounds. We're just gonna work with basic filtering. So I'll create the high pass filter and that's the hip object. I'll disconnect the final gain stage from the DAC and create actually two hip objects, one for each channel, though I will be applying the same um, frequency point to both of them. Now I'll connect them to the final gain stage. And the right inlet is the frequency that you're going to uh, start filtering at. So for this, I'll use a number box and connect it to the right inlet. Okay, so I'll press start. And as I move the number box up, I'm moving the point at which I'm gonna start shelving low frequencies. So you can hear the bass starts to disappear. Let me loop this. So now it's getting very shallow sounding. And I'll bring it back down. And that's the original file. We're not doing any filtering at all. Okay, so the low pass filter is going to do the opposite. It'll let low frequencies pass through and it'll shelve high frequencies. So what we'll do is we'll use the lop object. So as you can tell, it's really low pass, L-O-P. Same with high pass. Okay, we'll play the file. And here, we're gonna have to move this up. So now we hear lots of low frequencies and anything above 179 Hertz in this case is being shelved. So this is really great for those of you who like a lot of bass. Okay, so that's high frequency shelving um, or filtering and low frequency filtering. So now we're gonna do some bandpass filtering. The object for this is BP. So BP has two inlets, the or three inlets rather. The leftmost is for the frequency to be filtered. The middle inlet is for the center frequency and the right inlet is for what's called the Q. That's the steepness of um, the center, and it's also got some uh, feedback in it. It's how you get the sort of trademark howling filter sound, and so this filter can be a little harder to use uh, because it requires some finesse, but we'll try anyways. So what we've got here is a number box for the middle frequency, which is where we're gonna start um, letting the bandpass go, and then we're gonna create another one for the Q. Okay, so we'll leave the Q at zero for now. The Q can be kind of unpredictable, so you wanna be very careful when you're using it. And let's start playing. Now I'll move the bandpass filter, and you'll notice that there really is no effect. That's because we don't have any Q. So we'll turn up the Q. Let me loop this. And I'll use shift to get floats. Now I'll move the band pass.
And as I go higher, you'll start to hear that trademark howl that a bandpass filter with Q presents. And I'll increase the Q. And if I increase it a lot, you can hear I start to get this different tone. And that's, that's really the stock way in which you'll use Q in a bandpass filter is you can adjust it so, so much that you'll start to get these different tones come out. And this is really where cascading filters um, or chaining them together can really get you some cool sounds. You'll notice that as I adjust the cue, there is some zipping. This object isn't really meant to have uh, continually adjusted parameters going into the cue, so there, there will be some zipping. Um, you would have to use a more complex filter for that. Okay. So now let's take a look at one more filter. And this is a variation on the bandpass filter. This is the voltage controlled bandpass filter. So that is VCF. So the input here is going to be signal rate, not um, control rate. So it's pretty much identical to the bandpass um, filter, except for the middle inlet. And so we can't just use it as is because the middle inlet right now isn't working. Instead, we'll need to create a SIG object, take our control rate and turn it to signal. We'll need two of them. And we'll get a little more room. All right. Actually, I really only need one of these objects. I'll put it over here. It's getting a little bit messy, but we'll be okay. Okay, now we'll play it. And move the number box. Let's loop that. Okay, so it's a lot like the bandpass. What you'll notice, there isn't as much noticeable clicking on the adjustment of the cue. So you could create uh, filter sweeps with this one a lot more successfully than you would with bandpass. And that's how you'll get a sort of flanger a kind of sound. So just for fun, we'll create a V slider. And we'll adjust the properties of the V slider. So that the output, let's say, goes from 1000 to uh, 5,000. These are going to be frequencies uh, here. Let's make the width 24 and the height 48 so it doesn't take too much room. And we'll pipe it straight into the number box. Now we'll sweep. And if we find the right frequency with the right cue, we can really get this nice whistle going. So you see that simple filtering is achieved with uh, four main objects. Uh, there's hip, which is high pass frequency, so you're going to take off the lows. There's lop, which is low pass frequency, you're going to take off the highs. There's BP, which is a bandpass filter, which is going to take essentially a range of frequencies and cut the outsides of that range. Uh, that It's not as flexible in terms of being able to adjust it on the fly. And then there's VCF, which is a voltage controlled bandpass filter. And it is flexible in terms of adjusting it on the fly, but it does cost a little bit more of your processing power. Um, so if you've got a lot of them, you might suffer some performance issues.